This is the Biz News Podcast, one-on-one conversations with experts in business and personal development. It's been more than a year since COVID-19 took hold in the United States. But finally, massive inoculations seem to be cutting into the deadly toll. So much so that states and localities are opening up although often with mask and distancing restrictions. The opening up is in response to what some are calling COVID fatigue. What can be done about COVID fatigue? Our expert guest on this Biz News podcast has some ideas. She's Joe Deaton, who's Senior Director of Nursing for Behavioral Health Services at Luminous Health Anne Arundel Medical Center in Annapolis, Maryland. Many of our listeners are managers in business or government, for that matter. Um, And what we are noticing, I suspect, is what might be called uh, fatigue brought on by COVID-19. Certainly not as bad as the disease itself, but certainly serious as well. Uh, How, just in case somebody has been living under a rock, what the uh, symptoms do you see for so-called COVID f- fatigue? Um, we see, I do think it, it affects healthcare providers and, you know, people in management as well. Um, so I see um, irritability, tiredness, um, difficulty focusing, just kind of a lack of energy, um, so it does seem pretty pervasive um, right now, and people, different people, deal with it, you know, more effectively than others. It's been a hard time. In your opinion, is this a very serious thing that managers need to do something about? And if so, what? I would say the fatigue part is only really. Um, difficult if it turns into something like someone is depressed and they're suicidal or someone is really stressed out and they start drinking every day much of the day so those are the two situations that i think are of urgent concern other than that there are i know in in annapolis there are several support groups that are happening to give people just a chance to talk with others about their experiences. And most of them are by Zoom right now, um, but it does really seem to help. I think all of us you know, feel that need to connect with others. Uh, Joe, you have come up with a, a list of what you say are five ways to stay resilient during the pandemic. Uh, would you give us that list and then we can pre- perhaps go into some of the uh, points you make in more, more mm-hmm. depth? Yeah, absolutely. Um, So one thing is to take care of yourself. I know that lots of people, well, I'll just say, take care of yourself, your physical and emotional needs. Um, Also be able to kind of think of at least one good thing um, every day. Um, And then to connect with um, the thing I left out, which is probably very important, is um, to get the support or to exercise and meditate. Um, Try to go outside, um, get support from your colleagues or your family. So just to try to, the, the most important I think is really connecting with other people and then kind of what we get out of it, like what is one thing you have learned that you can use in a positive way about COVID, you know, your experience with COVID? Uh, let me uh, follow up on that and ask, what is the one thing you have learned for yourself? I have learned that I am very uh, persistent. So um, if I see a challenge, I will you know, try different ways around it. For instance, we had, uh, we opened up a new psychiatric unit in Annapolis uh, on the 14th of April. We debated about, did we want to really open or not? But we decided, yes, we did. So we then figured out how to open in terms of um, the safety of staff, safety of patients. But I would say my persistence was what I noticed the most. 
as as you have worked with uh, patients and and as you have uh, interacted with uh, coworkers and and other people that you know in your life, what has been something that you said, "Wow, this is something I didn't realize that the COVID pandemic has brought out." I think it is the um, one of the teams that I work with. They ended up being much closer than they were before. They ended up bonding. Um, you know, similar probably to people who are in the service, you know, who bond during a difficult time. So they were much more collaborative and, you know, kind to each other. Just really the depths of their relationships intensified in a good way. Sort of like we're all in the same COVID foxhole, so to speak. Yes, exactly. Now, how does Zoom or Skype help or hinder in this interaction among our fellow humanoids? <laughs> I think it has been very helpful in lots of ways. Um, so we are able to continue with our, our business of healthcare. Um, we are able to see patients via Zoom in a safe way. Um, we are able to connect with family members. All of that is really good. Um, I think the not good is um, hours and hours that many of us have a day on Zoom calls. And um, I mean, I think that's a, a Zoom fatigue, you know, that is part of COVID. That's, it's just very intense hour after hour. So um, I hope that, you know, post COVID, we can retain some of the some of the Zoom capabilities and then let go of the rest and meet in person again. Now, we're uh, looking at uh, now several uh, months of vaccine inoculations, and it looks like a huge percentage of the nation's population uh, is going to get vaccinated. What advice do you have uh, for our audience as we look to see that light at the end of the tunnel and realize it's not that oncoming train we had feared? Mm. Um, I would say vaccination is the single thing you can do to help yourself and others. Um, and then to remember that it is not um, over, over. It is, we still have to wear masks and wash our hands and be physically distant from others, but we can you know, gradually get back into that. I know the people that um, I have talked with who've gotten the vaccine, including myself, there's just a sense of relief that there is, you know, there is an action that you can take and you're making yourself safer um, in lots of ways. So uh, that's what I would say. Joe, anything you would like to add that we haven't had a chance to talk about? Could be anything on your mind. Um, I would say that most people have, have a lot of resilience within them. And that is just the ability to bounce back after something difficult. So um, I would ask that people just kind of see how they can bounce back because it, it is difficult. People have had many losses in terms of people as well as you know, lifestyle and, and those kinds of things. But um, we all have that little piece of ourselves that we can grow into really, um, you know, surviving and then thriving again, because it's pretty amazing to go through, you know, a hundred year pandemic. Um, that is something to be proud of. You've been watching the Biz News Podcast. We welcome your input. Send your email to editor at biznews.com. Thanks for watching.